Okay guys, I'm back. Long day again. Um, so the first Bollywood movie that I watched was Dabang, if you didn't watch the last part. And um, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was entertaining. I mean, the, the worst thing about it, and we were trying to figure out if it, was, if it was the copy that we got, or if it was just the overall quality of the movie, but the movie was a, like a technical failure. Um, there were... It's, okay, two people would be in the same room and they'd be having a conversation, and one person's dubbing their, and, and not, there were no English dubs, it was, sub, was subtitled, so their original dubbing um, was insanely awful, because one person was recorded in a studio, you could tell, okay, but then the other person, it sounded like they were recorded on the side of a street with like a little Logitech microphone or something, so one guy would be like, he'd be like, something, 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 uh, Hindustani language something something and then as soon as the next person would start talking you would hear like a switch from a completely mute recording booth to like and the other person would be like and I'm like do you guys notice that and that was one of the weirder things that happened and that happened constantly throughout the movie and so it was like what were they thinking like where, where were their heads when they did this um uh like I don't break in my boots on <coughs> um and the other thing that happened were terrible flaws with the subtitles, and I don't know if that's a common thing or not, but the subtitles, at least in the copy that we got, were really, really awful. They were just like things, just like certain lines of dialogue, the people would speak like a whole monologue and there would be no subtitle, and I'd be like, what did I miss? And they would have to fill me in, it was just missing things. And At one point there was a really funny, um, just like, not even really a typo, just maybe a typo, but a really bad typo. Um, one guy says to the other guy, he says, like, you killed my father, and then the other guy's like, but he was your brother, or something, and it was like, it was really weird, and I don't know, it was just funny, it was goofy, it was, it was, it was fun, but it wasn't a good movie, so it was, it was a good first experience, and the second movie that we started watching the other, we actually haven't finished yet, but it's one of her favorites, and it's called Om Shanti Om, and it stars, um, a really big name actor, I guess, in India, whose name is Shahrukh Khan, and he's a really cool guy, and I guess uh, when he made that movie, she said he was, like, I think in his late 40s or 50s, I can't remember, I think late 40s. This dude is, like, in amazing shape for someone who's 50 years old, because he has his shirt off in the movie, um, you know, on a couple different occasions, and, yeah, takes good care of himself. No wonder he's, like, an idol, but anyway, uh, as for the movie itself, Here's where I was introduced to the Hindi movie structure, because what it seems like, I don't know if they're all like this, but Dabang kind of had that structure too, and actually in the copy of Dabang we were watching, there was a, 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 an intermission, so at the halfway point, it was like, intermission, and because she says that most Indian movies run about three hours long, and I'm like, that's a long time to be sitting around, but I, I mean, if that's what you're used to, here in America we're used to like things that are barely over an hour, things that are, you know, just passing an hour and a half mark, so it's, it's really different, you know, it's hard to get used to. Um, but the way it's set up is almost as if the first half of the movie, now I'm talking about Om Shanti Om again, the first half of Om Shanti Om is set up like its own movie. So by the time you get to the middle, it's like there could be two separate movies, and so it's like two in one kind of, because if this had been made in America, I'm almost positive that they would have made two different movies. They would have released one, and then they would have released the other maybe the next year. But the problem is is that it it's almost angers me. I'm like, why do you do that when you could just have two separate movies? I wouldn't have to sit here for, you know, three hours. But at the same time, it's almost like... I, I want to compare it to, like, reading a book or, like, watching a play where everything kind of, like, builds up. It there's like the reason the first part of the movie is there is entirely for build up and like backstory at least in Om Shanti Om because it tells this entire backstory of this guy as he was trying to rise into fame trying to become an actor and things like that and, you know falling in love and by the halfway point that story is completely ended but the thing is, is that there's only so much you can be interested in it because the whole thing is a build up and so is the setup for the next half and it is really interesting but by the time you get to about the hour mark, so it leaves another, you know, half an hour for the rest of that part of the story, 
you're just sitting there and you're interested, but you're kind of bored because you like nothing's really happened. It's it's it got to a point where it was exciting, but then it kind of plateaued. But then, as soon as the first half of the movie ends and you roll into the second half of the movie, things pick up steam like boom, like right away. And so, you know, she was like, "Are you bored? You know, are you? Do you just want to? You know, it was late. She was like, "You just want to like hit the sack or something?" And I'm like, "No, not really. I kind of want to kind of want to keep watching." And so. When that first part of the story ended and the second unfolds, I was like immediately drawn right back into it because I knew things about the past and now it was like, you know what I mean? It's really weird. And so if you would have tried to market it that way as, um, as two different movies, then it wouldn't work because the first movie would have nothing in it. It wouldn't have any action. It wouldn't have any, you know, nothing would be driving the plot forward. It would just be based on your willingness to sit there and absorb information. But, and then the second one would be good, but, you know, more action-filled. It's, it's really strange, but I, I would love if more American movies were set up this way, where they devoted the entire first part of the movie. And, and in that regard, it feels a lot more like a complete story. It almost feels like reading a book, where your knowledge of the first part of the book directly relates to your enjoyment of the second part of the book and the first isn't necessarily exciting you know what I mean um, if they use this format for things where they wanted to develop a more complex story it would definitely work I think it would and uh, I think in that respect maybe that's why Inception works so well for me because when I saw Inception that's basically how I thought of the movie the first half was like entire setup it was like by the time it got to that halfway point, I was feeling a little bored, but then it kind of kicked up again, kicked up a notch. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically that, that structure. Um, we haven't finished it yet, but the songs in Om Shani Om are actually good. And so when a song comes on, I'm like, oh, that's so cool, and, you know, I enjoy it. Uh, the guy, Shah Rukh Khan, he has extreme um, charisma. And so whenever he's dancing, um, whenever anyone's dancing in the movie, it's just it's a mixture of, like, funny, but it's intended comedy. So you're not laughing at how bad the movie is. A lot of things are really funny. Like, for instance, there's this uh, point in the first half of the movie. Let me see what am I at? Seven minutes. There was this point in the first half of the movie where he's trying to impress this girl who's a big actress. And so uh, his, her name's Shanti Priya, which is strange because she tells me that's like two first names. So it's weird that they put them together. Her name's Shanti Priya. And he invites her to the set of a movie that he's filming. But what he does is he hires this fake crew to, um, like shoot a fake scene and so he it makes himself look bigger than he is and she gets there and um this is the, the whole scene is hilarious there's this guy in the background and and he keeps like every time he does anything in the set the guy's like what great acting what great acting and so he'll like do something and he'll be like what great acting what great acting and i the joke kind of flew by my head and i i asked her at the i asked my girlfriend i was like why does that guy keep saying what great acting what great acting and when i found out and when i go back and think about it it was extremely funny so maybe i wouldn't have been so tired i would have gotten it right away um and then there's this whole like fight he does with a fake tiger and it's maybe this part's unintentionally funny but he's like oh you big pussy or like you know like slapping the pussy or something like that and it's just hilarious and uh, he has this catchphrase he plays this weird cowboy with a mustache and he does this thing where he like points at the camera and he's like mind it and find it and stuff like that and it's really weird in this crazy like over the top accent but yeah it was, it was funny I was uh, I'm actually looking forward to finishing that one um, before this runs too long about nine minutes here um, the next movie that I watched was Blue Velvet and that was a Stephen not Stephen God, I always do that David Lynch Stephen Lynch is the Comedian with the Guitar, David Lynch movie from the 1980s, I think 86, and it had Kyle McLaughlin, Dennis Hopper, and um, some other people, I can't remember the names though. And I kept hearing good things about this movie, and so I finally watched it, and I was a little skeptical going in because I saw Mulholland Drive, and I thought Mulholland Drive was really trippy, confusing as shit, and I wasn't sure what to make of it. And then I read all the stuff about how it was actually basically all parts of a TV show that he was working on filming and he just kind of slapped them together. I mean, that was the gist of it. And then I was a little pissed. I was like, well, that's why nothing makes sense, you know? And so my whole image of that movie was deflated because I was like, well, it could have been, you know, an artistic expression of something, but it seems like if that's the case, he already had the stuff filmed and he was working on a TV show and he just slapped everything together because they denied his, uh, they um, denied his contract or whatever, then that's bullshit. 
So I was a little skeptical going in, but Blue Velvet is one of the like best movies I've ever seen, personally. Um, every single person in the movie gives a great performance, and every single performance is just surreal as hell. And not to say weird, but when you watch the movie, you feel like this isn't happening on Earth, or at least if it's happening on Earth, it's not your town, because, well, the acting is good, and the delivery is amazing, the characters in the movie act in a way that is so far removed from maybe anything you would have ever seen. And it's not that it's corny, and it's not that it's, you know, forced, you know. Like I said, the acting is really good, and most of the time it's really natural. But the characters in the movie, they just behave in ways that are so foreign, to me, at least, you know. There's a guy, there's a, um, the basic story setup is Kyle McLaughlin, he comes home from college because his father's put in the hospital. He's walking through this field, and he finds, like, a decomposing human ear. And so he's interested, so he picks it up and puts it in a bag, and he takes it to the police station. He talks to a detective, and the detective is one of the, the better characters in the movie, I think, because you really never know where to place him. Because as the story unravels, you know, things start forming, there's, like, conspiracies going on, and you don't know really who's on whose side, or who's in cahoots with who, necessarily. And the detective actually had me going the whole time, because he was so... the guy... I don't know if it was character, it was character and the combination of the guy who played him, the guy who was acting. He was so, seemed so complacent. You know, the comic often would talk to him and he'd ask him these things and the detective would kind of sit there like, is that so? Okay, well, no, promise me this. And like, just had such a strange way of speaking that I was like, dude, is that guy, like, is he going to like shoot him or something? I don't really know what's going on here. And just every character was really great. Every performance was solid. The movie doesn't lag behind on a single note. It just like keeps moving, keeps moving, keeps moving, keeps dragging you in, and it's like a fucking like downward spiral of shit for Kyle McLaughlin's character. Um, just amazing. Like if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth watching. Dennis Hopper is amazing in that movie. Um, plays this guy who's addicted to some kind of inhalant that you know some kind of drug that not really sure what it is, but it's about my twelve minutes. Just gives amazing performances and has the I didn't know where the line came for came from before this but you know I'll fuck anything that moves and it was uh yeah it was crazy shit and it was an amazing movie and by the time it ends you'll feel like nothing has happened but everything has happened you know what I mean and so very few movies can do that they can have a very strong resolution and a very exciting resolution and then they kind of have the downward action or the uh I forget what they call that yeah, I can't really remember, um, descending action or something like that, where everything just kind of falls back into place, and you're like, wow, if that kind of thing went on in the movie, it, it really gets your imagination rolling. So I would recommend all these movies that I've talked about, except for The Bung, I would recommend to people. I would recommend Om Shanti Om if you think you might be interested in foreign cinema. Uh, I would definitely recommend American Psycho, The Machinist, and Blue Velvet. And then on a on a tonal shift here, um, I also saw recently for the first time Monsters, Inc. and Finding Nemo from Pixar. Because I've actually only ever seen three Pixar movies, and those three are Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, and Toy Story 3. Uh, so I missed out on all the others, and I, you know, a lot of people say that Pixar can do no wrong, including, you know, Pro Gamer. He's like, dude, Pixar can't do something wrong. And I saw these two movies, and I'm inclined to agree with them, because they were really funny, extremely adorable, well-crafted, excellent um, animation, and just the digital cinematography and the shots they had set up were just really cool. And if I had to pick a favorite out of the two, I'd definitely say Monsters, Inc. And even though I say definitely, it's by slight margin. And that margin, really for me, was dependent on the endings of the two movies. I love the ending of Monsters, Inc. It's very... Um, kind of an open ending, and it just ends perfectly, right? The, it, the perfect note. It's, you know, um, just perfect. But you know, Finding Nemo had a good ending, ending too, but I really love Monsters, Inc. more than I love Finding Nemo. We're going to go through the rest soon, and I, they've made movies that I forgot. They've even made, like, Cars. I completely forgot about that one. Um, I know Up, made The Incredibles, and then... God, I think there's another one. I can't really remember, though, off the top of my head. But yeah, that's basically what I've do, been doing, just watching movies and kind of spending time with <coughs> my girlfriend. And you know, Pro Gamer is really busy with school, and he's uh, approaching finals right now. So is my girlfriend. So we're both very busy. Uh, I haven't really gotten a chance to hang out with Pro Gamer that much. But, um, yeah, getting close to 15 minutes again. So I think for now, I'm just gonna end this and say, 
you know, guys, uh, hang with me if you feel like it. And if you don't, then you're more than welcome to unsubscribe. But I should have some more content up sometime soon here. Until then, peace out. And you have my best regards, my most dear regards. And if you have anything at all to say, then as always, holla back. But peace for now. Bye.